Hi everybody, it's me, Lisa T, coming at you with some positive energy reading the language of letting go by Melody Beatty. Uh, it's a late for me. It's it's one o'clock in the morning, and I was like, oh, I got to, I'll do this tomorrow. And I'm like, nope, do it today. Got to do this today. This is so helpful. I love this stuff, and it um, helps me so much. So I hope it helps you too. Here we go. October tenth, payoffs from payoffs from destructive relationships. Hmm. Sometimes it helps to understand that we may be receiving a payoff from relationships that cause us distress. The relationship may be feeding into our helplessness or our martyr role. Maybe the relationship feeds our need to be needed, enhancing our self-esteem by allowing us to feel in control or morally superior to the other person. Oh my gosh. About two and a half years ago now, three years ago, I guess, I was in a really toxic relationship and definitely, oh my God, I totally felt like a martyr, like I was saving him, like I, um, I, I recognized as I got out of it and got healthy um, that it gave me a sense of, I felt better because I was with hanging out with a lower companion that I felt um, a sense of superiority. And I didn't know it in the moment, but I definitely remember, like, as I reflected back, I was like, oh yeah, it like made me feel like I was better. I, it made me feel better about myself, basically, because he wasn't doing so well. Because <laughs> um, he was in bad, it was bad. It was a really bad, destructive, toxic relationship. So, um, I can see, and my friends could see it that from the outside looking in, they're like, oh, Lisa and this and that and that. But I was, I refused because in my head I was, I was going to, this was, this was going to be it. I was going to make this work. I was going to save him. I was going to, you know, and, um, so it's interesting to see that this, cause I know I've never read about what was happening with me until this very moment. So the relationship fed my need to be needed, uh, even though I didn't feel needed, it was toxic. It was, I was, I was, it, anyways, I'm not going to go into details about how and why it was toxic, but, um, I didn't feel needed <laughs> most of the time. It felt quite the opposite. Um, but somewhere there was a, somewhere there was a, a need being met inside of me, an unhealed, unhealthy need. Um, yeah, so maybe the relationship feeds our need to be needed, enhancing our self-esteem by allowing us to feel in control or morally superior to the other person. Yep, I did that. Some of us feel alleviated from financial or other kinds of responsibilities by staying in a particular relationship. No, can't relate to anything there. My father sexually abused me when I was a child, said one woman. I went on to spend the next 20 years blackmailing him emotionally and financially on this. I could get money from him whenever I wanted, and I never had to take financial responsibility for myself. So avoiding something that you can do for yourself by leaning on the other person. Um, realizing that we may have gotten a codependent payoff from the relationship is not the cause, is not a cause from shame. So if you find yourself in this, it's not a reason to cause you shame. If if you're if if this brings up something and all of a sudden gives you an aha and you're aware of something. It's a good news. This is good news. Awareness is the first step. It means we are searching. So it's not a reason to cause shame, but the, it means we are searching out the blocks in ourselves that may be stopping our growth. So we've gotten into co codependent payoff. So getting in a relationship that is somewhat destructive, where it said would feed might feed, be feeding a need, or feed into our helplessness or our martyr rule. So it's feeding a subconscious belief, or um, feeding a something that makes you feel better but a false sense of superiority um, if it's feeding any of these things then it means we are searching out the blocks in ourselves that may be stopping our growth we're searching at the blocks in ourselves while we do this that are I don't get that part yet sorry we can take responsibility for the part we may have played in keeping ourselves victimized we may be willing to look honestly and fearlessly at the payoff and let it go we will find the healing, we will find the healing we've been seeking. So we are, if, when we are willing, so when we are willing to get honest and fear and fearless, when we are willing to look honestly and fearlessly at the payoff and then let it go. So what are you getting? I, oh, my, my best friend Carly would say that to me. She'd be like, what are you getting out of this? I'd call her and like freaking out and you know, it, it happened again and this happened again. And she's like, so what are you getting out of this, Lisa? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I getting out of this? I'm not getting, and this is it's killing me. It's hurting me. I'm destroyed. I'm heartbroken. But she was wise enough to recognize 
Lisa wouldn't stay in this unless she's getting something out of it. So, so when we take responsibility for the part we may have played and keeping ourselves in that kind of a situation, you're keeping yourselves in victim mode, in victimization. But when we are willing to look honestly and fearlessly at the payoff, so what's the payoff here? Oh, I'm getting this out of it. Okay, now let that go. Reckon, let that go. We will find the healing we've been seeking. We'll also be ready to receive the positive, healthy payoffs available in relationships, the payoffs we really want and need. Here's your prayer for today. Today, I will be open to looking at the payoffs I may have received from staying in unhealthy relationships or from keeping destructive systems operating. I will become ready to let go of my need to stay in unhealthy systems and I am ready to face myself. It's avoiding yourself. Amen. Sorry. It's avoiding, we're, we're avoiding ourselves when we're in any kind of addictive behavior, codependency, drinking, drugging, shopping, overeating, um, ad infinitum. There's so many things that people use to avoid looking at themselves. This is why we do the work. This is why we go inside. This is why we have introspection. This is why we want to gain awareness because we're learning about ourselves and um, we're learning to face ourselves. So things we're scared to look at maybe. Maybe you don't want to look at the fact that you play a victim in your life. Maybe you don't want to look because that may feel shameful or whatever. But if you can just own it, own it. Once you own it, then you can do something to change it. But if you stay in denial, then you can't do anything about it. So own it. Own it. Yo, yep, there I go manipulating again. Oh, yep, there I go. Yep, that I did that. Even in the midst of a conversation with someone, if it comes out of your mouth, oh, look, I just tried to control that situation. Look at me getting my ego involved or something. Own it. Once you own it, then you can, you're free from the shackles that bind you. You're free to, to you're free and you can make a change if you still choose to. Uh, it's up to you. It begins with you. That's a code. That's a good thing in codependency. Let it begin with me. Let it begin with me. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Hit subscribe. Give me a like, please. <laughs> and enjoy learning to let go and love yourself more and more every day. Love you.